Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Capturing Glory. We're going to go into the Word of God. It's time for the church to come out of the closet and become visible. You are the city, you are set on a hill, you are the light of the world. Great. Okay, I promised that I was going to go on with the foundation thing tonight, but, you know, there's so many doctrines that says, you know, Jesus was crucified since the foundation of the world, and, and you know, we've been predestinated and foreknown before the foundation, and then it takes it back before there was anything, billions of billions of trillions of eons ago, God crucified Christ, you know, and it all happened there, and I proved last week he didn't, it happened 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago was Christ crucified. Amen. That's where the foundation was laid. He said, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. It didn't happen 3,000 years ago. It didn't happen 10,000 years ago. It happened 2,000 years ago. It's an historical fact. Jesus Christ died on the cross too. And if you can take everything back to the cross, the whole gospel just becomes so simple. Okay? So simple. Then you don't have to, you know, Break your own brains to try and think out what happened before there was anything. God had a meeting in a meeting somewhere where there was nothing, and there was God and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and God decided that you're going to be part of everything. You know, if you start thinking like that, then there's too many things that you, you, you struggle with. You know, where did everything start? Where did everything happen? You know, but if you take it back to the cross, it's so simple. That's where everything happened, where Jesus died, price was paid, the blood was shed, you were born, you were chosen, so it makes it so easy. Mm -hmm. So we'll go on with that next week on trusting God, but tonight we're just going to do a few simple words, and God woke, woke me up this morning with a dream, and, uh, and this is what came out, Psalm 1, are you ready? Psalm 1. Blessed is the man, say, I'm he. <laughs> I hope you're going to be he. Blessed. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight. Uh, I, I think there's another psalm that says something like that. Wasn't it Psalm 37, verse 4? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Maybe we should put it there, you know? Delight. Sounds good. Delight yourself. Okay, maybe we should get a few, few people in the front to show us how you delight. <laughs> you delight yourself in the Lord. And what will he give you? I mean, to me, it seems like desire goes a little bit further than needs. I don't know, but he thinks it goes a little bit further than wants. I mean, you, you get needs at the bottom of the line, then you get wants, and then you get desires. Oh, no, because desire is not a good godly word. Well, it's in my Bible. The Lord will give you the desire of? Come on, maybe it's just a pair of Nikes you desire. Maybe it goes further to a set of Michelins. Maybe it goes further to a set of Bentleys. <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, but... No matter what, God, you know, remember the offering tonight. God is not El Chipo. He's El Shaddai. Okay, blessed is the man. This is actually what we're going to do tonight, blessed, but we're going to do a few things there. Blessed is the man. 
that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor standeth, nor sitteth in the way of the seed of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now it will do you no harm to take that word law, law there, and change it with word, word, because you can just take it right back to Joshua chapter 1. Now here it says to the psalm writer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate. And so meditates all that go. Meditate day and night, okay? In his Lord does he meditate day and night. And I think, you know, when God appeared unto Joshua just after Moses was dead, remember, and God said, Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Joshua, Moses is dead. Now, I don't know, maybe you should make your name Joshua just for tonight. And I'll talk to you for one minute. Joshua, Moses is dead. Uh, if you don't catch that, it means, hey, we're starting a new thing. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And out of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Moses is dead. And then God speaks to Joshua. He says, go up immediately and take this land. Every place that your foot shall tread on, I have given to you. And then God says something awesome in verse 8 of Joshua chapter 1. He says, let this word not depart from your Okay, your mouth and your eyes read the whole context. He says, but meditate upon it day and night. And then God says something that will happen if you meditate day and night. And he said, and so, and, and you can check it out. You shall make. Okay, say, I'm responsible. Come on, is there anybody tonight that will take responsibility? I mean, okay, forget the, forget the museum keeping. Forget the settling thing, okay? Let's be pioneers. I'm taking my responsibility, okay? So he says, God will give you the desire of your heart. What must you do? Delight yourself. And then he says, and meditate in his law day and night. So in Joshua 1, the same thing comes out. He says, Joshua, meditate in this law day and night. And he says, so, so you shall make, man, I love this, your way. Okay, who's going to make it? You are responsible. Come on, put up your right hand. This is the law court. Okay, not the, the law. Just, you know, just a, 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 say, so I'll be God. <laughs> I'm taking my responsibility. I'm going to make my way prosperous. I'm going to delight myself in the Lord. I'm going to get the desires of my heart. Okay, so shall you make your way prosperous. And then in, uh, what's it, 1 Timothy 4, 14, where Paul writes more or less the same thing to Timothy. He says, Timothy, this, these duties of yours, meditate upon it day and night. And Paul adds something. He says, cultivate it. Work at it. He says, and then you shall be prosperous in all your ways, and everybody shall, shall see your progress. And that's the same as uh, Joshua 1, same as Psalm 1, same as 1 Timothy 4. Okay? God's going to give you the desires of your heart. You're going to be prosperous. You're going to have progress. And you know what? All people will see it. It's not going to be a hideaway thing, a hide and seek thing. It's going to be a public thing. How many ever watched the program where I preach? Is it? Hi, I'm Kubis van Rensburg. Join me now for Captured in Glory. We're going to get right into the word. And then I start shouting, it's time for the church to go public with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, we're not playing hide and seek. God's going to do a public thing with you. God's going to put you as an ensign. God's going to put you as an icon. People's going to see, my goodness, who are those fat cats walking there, driving all those Camelacs around the country? Who are those people that are so blessed and so happy? They're always smiling. No matter what happens, they're always on top. If a righteous man fall down seven times, he gets up every time. I mean, like you, you man, like you're made out of some super rubber, man. Let's rather go on with the chapter. Hello, you super rubbers. <laughs> Remember when the Super Bowls came out the first time, 1963? We were on the Johannesburg show the, called the Rain Show then, and they brought out these little balls. They call it Super Bowl, and you throw the thing on the, on the floor. You never catch it again. I mean, it just keeps on bam, 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 bam. They should have given it to Steve McQueen there in Great Escape. Remember? <laughs> 
Okay. You could have had a lot of fun in that jail. Should have heard those jailbirds sing. Verse 3. And he. Okay. Tell the person next to you, this is now you. Answer him, say, I know. Can't you see I know? <laughs> and he. Okay, here comes the word tonight. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay. Okay. Can everybody read that word while you, you read? Look, read, look, and I write. Okay. So let's start. You shall be like a And what? He shall bring forth fruit. What shall he do? Yeah. How do you spell it? Leave. <laughs> Forgive me. His, okay. His leaf shall not weather. Come on. Where's the pioneers? Okay, tell. Okay, just for my sake. Even if you don't want to talk to somebody, just talking to the SI, I fire every museum keeper tonight. I command every settler to get off my property. I'm breaking through as a pioneer. Everything I do, as from now, shall prosper. My leaf shall not wither. And I'm a fruit bearing green tree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is my moment. This is my hour. This is my time. The accepted, designated, favorable time for Zion has come. I declare it over myself, over my family, right here, this moment. The breakthrough is here. Everything I do shall prosper. My progress is going to be seen by all. I declare it, I make a decree, I command it, and I demand it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, clap, do something. <laughs> Let's read the same story. I don't know how far we're going to get because it's actually a dream and I haven't even shared the dream yet. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 17 and Psalm 92, I think that is two good scriptures that can go with this one tonight. Jeremiah 17. <laughs> You're praying for me, I'm praying for you. I prayed for you all day. Okay. Listen to verse 7. I think this is a good addition. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots, by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. I gotta read it. I gotta how many of us are aware of the heat? You don't have to all put your hand up to get a point now, but uh, or a mark or, or you know, but I mean we feel the heat. You go through stuff and you experience, you know, the moment is, is, is strong on you. You know, the thing I'm going through now, uh, I can't tell you the amount of preachers that I spoke to the last three, four weeks, you know, and like 99.999%, I'm looking for the point oh one to make 100, but <laughs> has got something that they're going through. 
something that's beating them up. They feel like, you know, this is the 12th round of the World Heavyweight Championship and you've just been taking knocks. I mean, you know, you, you don't know if you've got a left eye or right eye. You don't know, you know, you know. Huh? And don't look too ugly. They phone me. They phone me, you know. And I think, oh, well, it's time for me now to get some attention. You know, to somebody say, oh, Kubas, can I pray for you? Now they phone me. Kubas, how are you? Before I can tell me, they tell me their problems. <laughs> I got a scripture. Lord, be gracious unto me. Okay, so, and I think, my goodness, is, is this part and portion of God's plan for my life to always sit and everybody, oh, Kubas, you know that? And then I said, you know what, I just spoke to so-and-so and he's goals are going, you know, I just spoke to so-and-so and he's only going, and I realized, my goodness, people feel the heat. And here the Bible comes and it says, if we're going to step into that tree situation that God is talking about, we shall not feel the heat. We shall not be aware of it. We, we, our leaves are not going to wither. Our progress is going to be soon. I hope we can get some amens. Our, 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 our success, our progress, our advancement. Something's got to happen that we don't just stand on promises all the time. I mean, let's be honest. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand. Oh God, I, it's good. I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King. But I would love to see some results for a change. I mean, it's good to have these promises. Come on, man. I, I would love to see the stuff on the table for a change. It's good to have the promises of my needs shall be supplied. But what about supplying it? I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know how honest you are with Jesus. But I found myself, you know, this morning I'm walking in the room and I'm standing there and I'm, you know, I nearly hit the door. You know, like, you know, like a little boy. Come on, daddy. Okay, I know it's just me. You all too honest. And, and I'm standing there by the, the cupboard door, you know, and I want to get myself clothes, but I'm shaking so I can't put my clothes on. I said, come on, Jesus. <laughs> okay, uh, if anybody can get the word. I did. And I hit the door, not hard. I said, come on, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, come on now. Jesus, come on, do it now. I said, Lord, your word says, if we that are evil know how to do good to our children, how much more will you do? And I said, Jesus, some results. Am I too honest for you? I said, can we have some results? I mean, we, we got the book. We see some stuff. But can we, can we see some results? I mean, I mean, I mean, Abram saw some results. David saw some results. Paul saw some results. I mean, there's a time where God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. But oh God, he also said, God delivered me from it all. You know, is there somebody would love to say tonight, God, can you not deliver us from it all? I trust I'm going to preach to you. <laughs> okay, shall not see when heat cometh. Are you there? But a leaf shall be green. And shall, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. How would you like when there's recession and everything and you're just not careful? You know what careful is? It's recession, watch your money. But when the drought and the recession is there, they say, who's that spending mad man there? He, I mean, this is the time where everybody's got to watch their money and this guy is just building, buying, breaking out, making bigger stuff, buying... Come on, man. How would you like, in the time of drought, you're the one that's doing more? Hmm? Yeah, feasting in the famine. And shall not be careful in the year of it. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Does it sound the same as Psalm 1? Okay, let's just jump to the Amplified there and read that half of verse 8. He said, She shall not fear when heat comes, but its leaves shall be green. It shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease yielding fruit. Come on, put your hand on there say, that's talking about me. Come on, put your hand there. Tonight is going to be a corporate thing. We're going to work together and say, this is talking about me. I am that tree. Put your hand there. I am, 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 I am that tree. Hmm? What was the other one that I said? Psalm 92. Yes, let's do Psalm 92. I really say tonight, come on, Jesus. I really, I say it, and somebody must say it with me. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. 
Come on, Jesus, show up. Show up, Jesus. I mean, remember when the father was there with his little boy and the disciples couldn't heal him, and, you know, all of a sudden, Jesus said, bring him to me. You know, come on, Jesus, show up. I mean, they were still busy trying it, and here comes Jesus down the mountain. And I think for somebody here tonight and somebody watching by TV, Jesus is coming down the mountain tonight, right into your valley situation. Say, come on, Jesus, let this thing now go. Let every devil depart. Let every weakness and sickness and poverty and every hellish demonic thing disappear from my life. I wish I can scream out tonight, say, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus. Huh? Remember, this, this tree guy shall always be green. Now, Psalm 92 is an awesome one, verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. You thought there were no unicorns, eh? I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Come on, say, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. My eye shall, oh, here it comes. My eye also, also shall see my desire on my enemies. Okay, is there anybody that can join our brother David maybe tonight? Just look at me. Now you must be very honest. I know there's some super spiritual guys that never, but how would you like to see some scourging fire come down on some enemies of yours? <laughs> now? Yeah, God can... I don't want to be too honest tonight. Now, now you know, I'll get more letters, but... Don't you feel there's a few things that you would like to be removed from your life? All those people that's always talking about you, wishing you evil, coming against you, opposing you, jealous on you, backbiting you, fighting you. Come on, man. No matter where you are, you find them. This guy says, when that anointing comes, I'm going to see desire on my enemies. Hmm? Now remember, at the end of the day, our wrestling is not flesh and blood. But it's spirits, principalities, powers, wickednesses in high places. So if you're not too scared to use the word in church, say devil, devil. every demonic thing, every demonic I, believe it's time I believe it's time to go to hell. Jesus did say, to them that believe, these signs shall follow. In my name they shall cast out demons. Yes. Huh? I just decided, you know, for 59 years, every now and then I eat a low because my blood just disappears, you know, since I was born. And I realize I'm born again, so I don't have to sit with this stuff. So sometimes it must leave me, you know. I keep on pressing on, believing, trusting. But I thought this week, maybe I must give the thing a name and call him your blood-sucking vampire demon. Get out of my life in Jesus' name. I mean, you don't have to. It's me that's sitting with it. You're sitting with something else, you know. But I thought, why must I every four or five years, boop, there goes my blood. Then I can't walk. I can't think. I get confused. I've got no strength. You know, I'm fighting for life, fighting the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life, you know. And I thought... What sucks blood? Oh, it's a vampire. A blood-sucking vampire demon. Yeah, and, and I said, Lord, can you send some two or three sanctified curse words that we can... Yeah, but he doesn't. So the only thing we can do is say, get out in Jesus. And they can't smile, man. Don't be so ugly. Okay? Bind the thing. Get out of my life in Jesus' name. Maybe yours is sitting on your finances. Or maybe it's, you know, in your washing machine, you know. Maybe it's out of the washing machine. It's in the dishwasher now. Maybe it's out of the dishwasher. It's in the servant girl. I don't know where it is now. But, you know, don't you think every devil must just... Come on. What's a good word? Hambat Samaya. What do you say, Versa? Huh? 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 Yeah, whatever. Hmm? Call him what David call him. Goliath. Huh? Stop standards, Goliath. Okay. okay, we are in Psalm 92. Verse 11. This is coming back to where we started with the desire, remember? 
My eye shall also see my desire on my enemies. My ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Ah, we're going to hear how all the devils just left. In Jesus' name, people are now prosperous, successful, happy, blessed, healthy, wealthy, filled with peace, no cares, no anxieties. Woo-hoo-hoo. Verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Oh, here's the tree again. He shall grow like a cedar. There's another tree again. Those that be planted, oh my goodness, in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Oh, listen to this. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. The original language says that they shall be green and fat. Okay? The word green is fresh. They shall always be green. Their leaves shall not wither. It shall always be green. It shall, oh, come, put your hand there. Say, that's me. It's talking about me. It's talking about me. Come on, remember Isaiah 54 verse 17 that says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn in judgment. Nothing shall be able to stand against you. Come on, Romans 8.31. If God be for us, come on, who can be against us? He who did not spare or save his own son, but gave him up for us all. How much more will he not with him freely give us? All you holy, prosperous saints. Okay, so just think of it. We're going to be anointed with fresh oil. We're going to be trees. We're going to be always green. We're going to be always flourishing. We're going to be prosperous. Our progress is going to be seen by everybody. We're going to see not only the desires of our hearts, but also the desires that we have in our enemies. It, mean, it doesn't mean I wish so-and-so, you know, smash up his car. But I wish the devil that works through so-and-so will go burn for a change. Hmm? That's a good word to say, go burn. <laughs> go, go burneth, go lieth. <laughs> you can go lieth in the fire and go burneth. You know, get, get out of me. Yeah? Hmm? But the anointing is such a vital role. And I, I, I remember when Jesus appeared on the scene the first time for ministry in Luke chapter 4 when he came out of the desert being tempted of the devil. Remember? And he found the place in the scroll, Isaiah 61, and he started reading. The Bible said he found the place. He read and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring recovery of sight to the blind, to bind up the brokenhearted and stuff like that. And then if we take it back, Luke chapter 4, and we trace it to Isaiah 61, he tells you the next verse, so that you can be trees of righteousness. Okay? So that you can be trees of righteousness. Then he goes on, a planting of the Lord. Hmm? So God wants you to be prosperous, to be successful, your holy planting I don't know. We should maybe just get to, uh, what was that scripture that I thought of now? Oh, yeah. It was Isaiah 55. Remember Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11? And I wish you would take this one and make it very precious to your heart tonight. It says, as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, and don't return to it. You know? But it's sent to the earth to bring forth fruit, to make it bud, to make it grow. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. Okay, you are here. It shall do. Okay, I said, we're going to say tonight, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. It shall do what it is sent for. It shall be prosperous therein. It shall not return unto me empty. Have you ever read the next verse? And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Come on, all the trees. Yeah, let's do Romans 4 and 2 Corinthians 4. Goody, goody. Goody, goody, goody. Where did we start? Remember, delight yourself in the Lord to give you the desire of your heart. Everybody with me? Blessed is the man. Meditate on that word day and night. You shall be prosperous. Progress shall be seen by all. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You shall bring forth fruit. All day long. 
His leaves shall not wither. Whatever he do shall prosper. Okay, shall not feel the heat. Hmm? Shall not be, what was the other one? Anxious or careful. In drought. Oh, okay, just point your finger. You haven't got it there. Point your finger. Say, it's me he's talking about. It's, that's me. That's me. I mean, huh? I'm fed up with the heat. Hey, I, I'm fed up with feeling the heat. Hey, you, I'm, you should be saying it by now. I'm fed up by feeling the heat. I mean, if God says I'm not going to feel it, if God says I'm not going to be anxious, if God says I'm not going to be careful, I mean, is God a man to lie? I mean, this is what Balaam said to Balak. God is not a man, Numbers 23, 19, that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken and shall it not come to pass? I mean, God cannot lie. Come on, say, God, your word is true. Come on, everybody say it with me. Say, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Do it. He wants to. He loves you. He cares for you. Hmm? I trust I'm preaching to you, not just to me. Hmm? For everybody in the house. Hmm? Martin, you're ready. Right? From, uh, for, we are in 2nd Corinthians, but in 1st Corinthians 15, you don't have to go there, just look here. From 44 to 49. He says, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. The first man was of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The third man is a living soul. The second man is a quickening spirit. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Uh -huh. And I think this will give us a springboard for what we're going to do. There's the natural versus the spiritual. Okay? The one is in Adam, the one is in Christ. The one is of the earth, the one is from heaven. The one is a living soul, the one is a quickening spirit. Hmm? And I trust you checked out your. And I trust you checked in there. Okay, just for yourself, say, I've just checked in to the spiritual side. Christ. Say, I've just served noticed on Adam, the carnal, the natural. The old stinking fleshly thing. I serve notice on it in Jesus' name. Right, Second Corinthians chapter four. This can be seen. This is normally unseen. All right? So, during the course of the night, I woke up. And stuff that we all know, but God said to me, it's time to call the unseen into the scene. But when this unseen becomes seen, it does not become natural. It supersedes excels and is far above what you see the natural because you brought it out of the spiritual okay and it is more or less hebrews 11 verse 1 that we all know so well now faith is the substance of things hoped for it is the evidence of things not seen okay again listen and this is a word from the lord i don't care how well you know it now faith is the substance this is substance. I mean, if this disappears, it's invisible. It's not substance. So faith is a substance. It means it is a tangible, workable, living thing. 
Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Hope is unseen. But faith becomes the evidence of things not yet seen. It means the substance comes out of the unseen into the seen. It becomes a reality. And the things I hope for, all of a sudden I have the desires of my heart. All of a sudden my progress, my success, my prosperity is seen by everybody. All of a sudden the pains are gone. The viruses are gone. The cancer dried up. The bank balance is different. There's money in my name. I've got a car to drive with. I've got a house to stay in. All the backbiters is gone and my wings are growing again. Something is happening. Chapter 4, 2 Corinthians. Mm. Verse 17. I'll just throw verse 13 in. I can't preach it. It's going to be take long. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. We believe, therefore we speak. I just thought I'd throw that in. That's why I want you tonight to speak with me. Open your mouth and say, this is what I believe, this is me, this is me. But for tonight, verse 17. Let's go to the Amplified. For our light, momentary, affliction, the slight distress of the passing hour. Hey, okay. You've got to make a decision before we read on. The stuff that's happening to you, is it permanent or is it temporary? You make a decision tonight. Is it permanent? Did God make you to suffer with that financial losses, that trouble at the work, that sickness in your body? Is this the promises of God or is it temporarily? So when we read, you say, mm-hmm. Uh huh. Remember, I'm talking to you, and you're putting your name in there. We make a quality decision tonight. This is not just the word. I changed the word that I want to preach because of a dream that God gave me early hours this morning. For the, our light momentary affliction, the slight distress of the passing hour, mm -hmm, is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure, excessively, surpassing all comparisons and all calculations, a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease. Come on, somebody need to get in this work. Dear Father in heaven, imagine I have a calculator, a scientific calculator. I remember when they came out. When I was in school, actually when I was in university, we still used slide rules with a logbook. You can remember the logbook, you know, and the sliding rule. This is how we worked in the 60s. And I remember the first time we got a calculator. Man, you could count things up. One and one is actually Two. Nah, eh, oh, man. And then I did physics four, and, uh, and they brought out the scientific calculator. And all of a sudden, you don't have to look at what is the sin, the cost, and the tan, and the corners. You could just press it in. And you could press the value, and it calculates it, and it throws. Oh, Imagine you're sitting, you've got the biggest calculations. It takes hours of the biggest brains, the Einsteins, you know, and who else? And they all sit and everybody's got their scientific calculators and their rules. Mm, man, and they work out for days. It becomes months to work out how they're going to do this thing. God says, I'm preparing something for you beyond calculation, beyond anything. That's the weight of glory that this light affliction you're going through is busy working for you. Something is going to come out of this that's going to be so great. Man, man. Verse 18. Verse 18. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen 
but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible are temporal, brief, and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. Come on, where's that big old hand of yours? Put it there on your Bible. Make a circle around it. Put the date there. Say, this is mine. Come on, come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. We believe, therefore we speak. We also have the same spirit of faith. Come on, put it there. Scratch in your Bible, man. If you haven't got scratch on your hand, say, this is it. Come on, come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, you in your house. Come on, Jesus. Come, Kubis. Come on, Robbie. Come, come. Somebody needs to join in. It's all right to have promises. But what about fulfillment? Hmm? Bless my father. He made a lot of promises we never saw. And I decided if I have children, that's one thing I'll never do. Is make a promise and not keep it. Brother, I'll... I'll do anything. If I said, I'm going to get you that thing, son, I get it. Because we always had to, oh, Dad, look at that. Yeah, Christmas. <laughs> Christmas came, Christmas went. Dad, no oh, birthday. Birthday came, birthday went. Hmm? And I see it so many times, you know, how children grow up with stuff in their lives, hang ups, because of parents making promises. God is a promise keeper. Not just a promise keeper. God wants promises to come into fulfillment. Brother, if he can do it in one area of our lives, he can do it in another area of our lives. And I believe tonight we're going to say, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. This is it. Hmm? Okay, what did I say? Romans 4. Romans 4 is a good one. I'm saying everything to, to just read two scriptures tonight. And I trust it's going to come through like it did for me early this morning about 4, 4 30. Romans 4. I could have just quoted the scriptures, but I think it's good if we read it together, don't you think so? Hmm? So, we do the King James first and then the Amplified, verse 17. Dawn, here it comes. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. Hey, church, even when hope is gone, you can believe in hope because there's a God that calls things that are not as though they already were. Mm -hmm. Amplified Bible, as it is written, I've made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead. I mean, this is now past raising. This is dead, man. Your financial thing looks dead. Your business thing, that new job thing, that CV that you've put in, all looks dead. God calls the things that are dead, brother. Mm -hmm. Your body feels like, hey, man, the scans is not good news. The blood reports are not good. You know, ask me, I can tell you a three, five, four year experience that's a horrible nightmare, man where everything that the doctor tells you is just bad, 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 nothing medical science can do for you, nothing that, you know, there's nothing they can do for you, nothing they can do for you, yeah? Hmm? God says, ha! If he's dead, I call him. If it's non-existent, I call as it were, I mean, But what's your situation? Let's read the rest Amplified Bible. Who gives life to the dead, and speak, here, I like this one, and speak of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as they already existed. 
Have you got a few things that you can think of tonight? Hmm? Come on, call a few things before I go on. Say, come on, that, that thing, that child, that parent, that wife, that financial thing. Hmm? I see no lips moving. The person next to you knows, listen to you. Because we believe, we speak. I say, every cancer cell is dead. Every anemic hemolysis is gone. My blood and bone marrow produce. It's not dead. I've got an immune system that's working in the name of Jesus. Come on, say something. Say something. Speak to that thing. I command finances to flow into this business. I command every jealous, striving tongue to depart from me. My children serve the Lord. I call a wife for my son. I call a son, a husband for my daughter. Do something. That CV of my child is favorable. I call an open door at the university. I command this deal to go through. I command this house to be sold. Command this new car to come. Say it, man. <clears throat> right, we're going to do more a little bit later on. Okay, let's start going to the end of the meeting. When God woke me up this morning and started speaking to me, a lot of scriptures came, and I can't share it always. You know, like God speaks two seconds, and you've got about 10 hours to tell the story. But you know, a lot of things just came up to me. I remember years ago, our first church was just built and, and another church across town had a meeting. And, uh, or not they had a meeting. There was an American guy coming to preach by us. And I phoned this church and I said, uh, this guy is such an awesome preacher, but I can't have him the whole week. I'd love to share him with your church. And uh, I'll pay the costs. If we take him three days, you take him three days. You don't have to give him an offering. I'll give him an offering. But then I'll take our whole church to your church just to bless you. <laughs> good pastor, right? Okay, so uh, I thought it was a good deal. I could have get some brownie points if I was a Boy Scout. But, you know, but, but we did it. And, and, and this guy preached. And the first night that he preached in the other guy's church, you know, we were sitting in the front row. And uh, the anointing was so strong that he pointed his finger at me and started prophesying. And I was holding on to, you know, that old wooden benches and I got there. And this thing started shaking. And, 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 he, and he said, uh, brother, this is the word of the Lord. If you can see it, you can have it. You must have heard it all over. Preach so many sermons. If you can see it, you can have it. I said, I can see it. I can see our church, I see the new church, I see a television station, I see a Christian school. I mean, I can see it. And I mean, you see part of it now. But you know, uh, three years ago, four years ago, there was no church here. Huh? Seven years ago, there was no television station here. I, said, I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. You know? And, you know, and he was speaking a total different message, but I came home and I prepared a message out of Second Kings chapter 2 when Elijah and Elisha was walking together. I mean, remember the Lord was going to take Elisha away in a whirlwind and uh, Elisha kept on sticking with Elijah. You know, Gilgal, Bethel, Jordan River, you know, they come there, Jericho. And uh, Elijah said to Elisha, what is it that you want? He said, just a double portion of your spirit. And Elisha just said to Elisha, it's a hard thing that you desire. But if you see me when I go, you can get it. If you can see it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can have it. And this was Elisha's whole life story. Remember 2 Kings 6? It was the Assyrians that was there in battle with Israel. And remember every time that the, 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 the Assyrians wanted to draw up against Israel, they knew exactly where they're going to be. And, you know, and, and the king was worried. He said, you know, must, there must be an enemy in our camp. Somebody is a spy. And remember, and they said, no, there's a man in Israel. He can tell the king what you say in your room. Hmm? The prophet that threw water on the hands of Elijah. Remember? And he sent a whole army to capture one man. Remember? And Elisha's servant woke up. Said, oh, my Lord, my Lord, we surrounded. 
The whole mountain is full of wagons and chariots. Elisha said, ha, those that are with us are more than those that are with them. Elisha didn't go check out. He's lying in grotto number one. I mean, he's not even caring about what's happening outside, you know. And here's Elijah's servant Gehazi, and he's now counting. Elijah, Elisha, one. Me, two. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Oh, man. Oh, it's millions, man. Elisha, you're right. They're surrounding us. We, too. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. He said, my Lord, you must come check us out. This is big. You know what Elisha said? Lord, open his eyes. So where did Elisha see? In the unseen. He's not walking in the realm of the natural. He's walking in the realm of the spiritual. He's not seeing armies. He's seeing angels, man. And are they, are the angels not spirits sent out to minister on behalf of those that are to be heirs of salvation? Come on, say, come on, angels. It's time to work. Come on, say it. Angels, go. Work for me. Angels, start operating. Come on, say it. Angels, come on, Jesus. Come on, angels. It's time they send out to operate and work on your behalf. I command the angels the warrior angels to go fight for you to go bring in your finances to protect you to cover you to be around you I command the angels to start working come on Jesus and the Bible says like suddenly in a moment in a twinkling immediately the mountain was surrounded with chariots of fire and horses of fire man flaming fire psalm 104 all those angels wow the unseen into the scene right let's close mark 8 and john 9 I, I don't say this lightly. This is, this is not a, just a message. I can, I can preach revelation knowledge to you that your ears hang out. This is a prophetic word, and I'm very serious about it. When, I know when God wakes me up. I know when God speaks. I know when God says something, and I know when God has something great in store. And tonight, something must happen. There must be some breakthrough in some areas of our lives here tonight. There must come change tonight. Come on, Jesus. Come on, holy angels. Come on, God. Perform your word. Jeremiah 1.12, God watches over his word to perform it. God's word runs swiftly. God's word cannot return void. Forever, O oh God, your word is settled in the heavens. The word of God is truth. I have given them your word. Your word is truth. But now I must finish. Let's go to verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida. And they bring a blind man unto him. And besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spat on his eyes and put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. He looked up and said... I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and see every man clearly. To close this thing about the natural versus the spiritual. You okay? Okay, just listen to me one minute. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, as it is written, I have not seen. This is for you. Ear have not heard. It has never come in your heart, just in short, what God has prepared. Hey, are you still here? Yes. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it come. That seems like unseen to me. 
That seems like a faith thing to me. That seems like God wants to do something. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Then He says, For no man knows what's inside of a man except the Spirit of a man. No one knows what's in God except the Spirit of God. But we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, that we can know the things that God has lavishly says the Amplified Bible bestowed on us. Then He goes on to say, But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, but the spiritual man. Okay, say tonight, I'm going to be the spiritual. And I'm going to stay, stay the spiritual. Okay, so what's the, what's, what's the message? You're supposed to have a story. I, mean, I don't know <laughs> if you've got a message, but I'm supposed to tell you the story. Okay? So uh, God woke me up like 4 o'clock this morning. He said to me, it's time that you get some stuff out of the unseen into the scene. And he says, for this reason, I want you to understand something about the fact that you are a tree that is planted by rivers of water. I say, it's fine. God says, go tell the people they are trees. See? I say, yes, it's fine. But it went so fast and it went so quick. And so many scriptures came to being. And this is the two scriptures that God gave me in the dream. And I woke up and it was so vivid, like I was literally there. I saw Jesus on the ground. Mud, I see. And I mean, theologians, just forgive me one night. I'm just talking about a dream. Right? And, and Jesus said to the man, what do you see? You see, I see men as trees walking. And he said, good, I've touched your spirit. You now see what you're supposed to see. Now I can touch your body. Touched him a second time, say, what do you see now? He said, now I see men clearly. Okay? God said, and this is the difference. When that man came out of the situation, he had no criticism. He had no fault finding. All he could say was good stuff. He says, this must be the prophet. This must be the son of God. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And God said, it's time that somebody sees themselves in the spirit realm. Trees of righteousness. He says, and if you see, if that eyes can be opened tonight, and you can see in the spirit realm, everything that you need in the natural will just follow because you'll just see all things clearly.